Are you wondering about the connection between cortisol and testosterone replacement therapy? My name is Dr. Tara Nella, and in this video, we're going to look at this specific question. We're going to look at my clinical experience, some of the key variables to understanding what's going on in your own body, and what some of the research suggests about this question between cortisol and testosterone replacement therapy. Also give you some tips and clues on what you can do if you think you might have a problem with cortisol from your testosterone replacement therapy. Again, my name is Dr. Tara Nella, and I make these videos to help you go beyond basic health, but each video is not tailored specifically to your needs. So please read this medical disclaimer before we jump into the video details. So testosterone can work like a mood stabilizer and also can be a bit stimulating to the neurons in the central nervous system. So in this way, testosterone can both have kind of a calming effect and also a stimulating effect. Strictly speaking to what I see in my practice, this is more or less what I do see. In some people and at certain doses, testosterone will raise cortisol. And with this raise in the cortisol, there can be impairments in sleep quality. On the other hand, in other people, there can be improvements in stress levels and stress tolerance. Sleep function and actual cortisol levels can actually improve as well. This improvement in the stress response can actually happen at doses that are higher than what's seen in the people that are having the opposite kind of response. So it can almost be kind of difficult to predict what kind of response you're going to have, but that increased stress response, increased cortisol response is not that common, even in people that tend to have more anxiety or higher stress. However, these are the people that generally you want to be more cautious with in terms of the dose that you're going to give, because it does seem to be a dose-dependent phenomenon. But what's actually occurring here to create such divergent effects in different people? Let's see what kind of evidence we can find for either of these situations. So in this study, it suggests that testosterone replacement therapy has a suppressive or blunting effect on the cortisol response at the adrenal glands. Still, we want to interpret this study with caution because it definitely was a smaller study. But let's look at it in a little more detail. So the study involved healthy male volunteers age 18 to 45, and they didn't really have any medical or psychiatric problems. There were 11 male participants, and they had undergone suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, so basically the connection between the brain and the testes. Some were given testosterone replacement and some were not. In addition, the corticotropin-releasing hormone, which is basically what comes from the brain and it stimulates the pituitary, which then stimulates the adrenals to make cortisol. And so this was given as a stimulation test to assess the type of response under high or low testosterone conditions or just normal testosterone conditions. And what they found was that those receiving testosterone replacement therapy resulted in a blunted cortisol response to the corticotropin releasing hormone stimulation. They found an overall decrease total cortisol and decrease in peak cortisol production. And this actually occurred even though that the testosterone replacement therapy led to an increase in the ACTH response compared to placebo. So the ACTH is basically what comes from the pituitary. So the corticotropin-releasing hormone was given. That stimulates the ACTH to be produced. But then that ACTH is what stimulates the adrenal glands to make the cortisol. What this study seems to suggest is that there may be a reduced cortisol response during testosterone administration in terms of the sensitivity to the ACTH at the adrenal glands so that there's not as much output of cortisol that's being produced in the final output. Another study looked at this from a slightly different angle and basically they looked at the effects of long-term low-dose administration, what they considered low-dose administration on nocturnal spontaneous cortisol secretion in healthy older males. There were 17 men that received a placebo and 18 men that received placebo plus testosterone. And it was over 26 weeks and they were administered testosterone at a dose of 100 milligrams as an injection, but it was every other week. And it led to some increases in the 
total testosterone, free testosterone, sex hormone binding globulin, et cetera. And they found that administration of the testosterone really had no or little effects on the AM cortisol and cortisol secretory parameters. So basically there wasn't a big response from administering this testosterone on the overall cortisol response. Now, the dosing of the testosterone in this study definitely could be called into question, and maybe the reason they didn't see much change, the dose simply wasn't high enough or frequent enough. Now, 100 milligrams per week probably would be high enough to see some change, but we don't really know when they were checking the cortisol after giving the testosterone injections. If they were checking the cortisol two, three, four days after the injection, we probably would expect to see some difference there, but they didn't really discuss that in the paper. In my experience, testosterone definitely does have an effect on cortisol, and as the testosterone levels reach the upper ends of normal is where you're more likely to have a stronger effect on cortisol, but this doesn't happen to everyone. And one critical factor may be the amount of estrogen that's being produced and the corresponding cortisol binding globulin. So that if you're producing more estrogen, you're going to get more of this cortisol binding globulin. And with more of that, you're going to have less bioavailable cortisol. Now, that's more about what you're going to feel on a day-to-day -day basis, but the amount of cortisol that's floating around in the blood can still go up and you can still see that on your blood tests. I think the effect of testosterone replacement therapy can also be looked at in terms of a bell curve. When you start to get too much testosterone, the stress response is actually going to increase and too little testosterone replacement therapy or too little testosterone in your body is going to also lead to an increased stress response. So the kind of optimal is the sweet spot in between too much testosterone, you're not having the optimal stress response and too little testosterone is not going to give you the optimal stress response. And this is similar to how attention works with dopamine and ADD. You want to have the right amount of dopamine for the right amount of attention. Too much is not good and too little is not good. And I think the same is probably going on with testosterone in the overall stress response. So the long and short of it is you can kind of track your cortisol levels if you're on testosterone replacement therapy and get a better understanding how this is working in you. And someone that's really sensitive, you may want to do a urinary cortisol, which gives you the free cortisol, which is basically stripping out the effect of the cortisol binding globulin. So if you have questions on this topic, you can ask me in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer your question. If you want to get a more customized, useful, and detailed answer, consider joining a membership program. With the membership, I can give your questions more time and attention. Either way, I hope this video was useful in giving you a better understanding of the connection between cortisol and testosterone. If it did, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.